our next guest, one more and one berry. You get your 20 minutes for it. And I promise. <laughs> You're gonna throw me out of here. Right on. No. Our next guest, Warren Woodbury, is a great supporter of intellectual freedom. He's a leader in the community. He has spoken many, many years, maybe 10 or more for us. Always, always back are different, but always defending the rights of women. He is one of my favorite. Are you supposed to say? You're already one of the thirty. My bad. Never mind. <laughs> that was great. So, <laughs> I could use my MC outline, but it doesn't say where I'm supposed to be instead of start jumping around on it. We. We love Warren. He's the executive director and an artist at Woodbury Park. Ventures Chess and Art website. His wife, Yolanda, is very creative. And I'm going to be putting on the necklace she gave me as soon as I get the tan. She is a wonderful person and a great educator and artist as well. We are delighted they are both here. And Warren has dedicated a lot of his life to educating the public and also to helping young people find themselves and playing chess and find their abilities. So without further ado, I will let Warren tell you about banning the woke Band for America. And let's see why they're going to offend somebody. Oh, that's part of it. Hello, everybody. Everybody in here of age, or you need parent consent to listen to me? My parents. Oh, he means it? <laughs> All right. All right. Listen, if you were to attend a conference of educated academics, professors, teachers, librarians, historians, and ethnologist, I would be the last one you'd want to talk to. Most, if not all of you came to college to learn something new, not just to hear your parents sit around the dining table and tell you how to think and to tell you how to vote. I know the meaning of the word woke because I had unknowingly utilized it when I lived in the South. I lived in Birmingham, Alabama, hotbed, Atlanta, Georgia, hotbed. New Orleans, hotbed of racism. So I've been there and done that, but I wasn't even familiar with the word woo. Uh, and, and all you young people today, it's a very historic act to have you sitting in this room, not only to question the word woke, but to question the word banned books. It's right up there with Hannibal crossing the elf on elephants, in the Tunic War in 218 BC, it took a lot of courage. But I'm glad that the 19th century Virginia law is not with us today in the 21st century, as a gathering such as this would have been whipped, arrested, and put in orange jumpsuits. You would not be able to meet with anything contrary to the, the law at the time. Let's do a contest first. But I want you to raise your hand if you know the answer, but don't say it out loud. Just raise your hand. Don't whisper to your neighbor, whatever. If I say that someone was seen at a National Football League football game with the mother of one of the players and sang a song with the words, haters gonna hate, 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 and shake it off, who is she? Raise your hand if you know who it is. Quite a few. Very good. Okay. If you answered Taylor Swift, you would be correct. This next lady is extremely intelligent. Raise your hand if you know her. She loves to garden and is married to a tall young man that is now retired and loves basketball. They have two daughters, and he was former president of the United States of America. Who is it? Raise your hand if you know who it is. What? Only three people know, four people know, five people know Michelle Obama? <laughs> Goodness, 
faces, you got to keep them at the school. <laughs> but you would be surprised to know that both are considered woke, along with Selena Gomez, Katy Perry, Jennifer Lopez, Ariana Grande, Billy Eilish, Cher, Pink, Beyonce, Timothy Shelmet, and many, many more entertainers. They are all woke. They are all against this banning of the word and misuse of the word woke. Anybody know Kristen Stewart? Raise your hand. Very good. Kristen Stewart, the actress, wrote on her Instagram page, I never do this, but anyone who is not registered to vote, please take the opportunity to feel heard and not hopeless. I'm voting because I want to believe in our country, because I believe in climate change. I believe in systemic racism. I believe in freedom of speech and the right to assemble. I believe in gun control. I believe that women have a right to make choices about their own bodies. I believe people have the right to live in love and identify however they feel in their hearts without fear. I believe that people care about each other and they all want you young people to carry on the fight for justice and get out and vote your conscience. That makes sense? Okay. On Tuesday morning, Taylor Swift posted, uh, what did she post? She posted an Instagram encouraging how many uh, followers do you think Taylor Swift has? How many? Anybody? Throw a number out there. 50 million. How many? 50? You had to multiply. You got 272 million followers. And she urged them to register the vote. Afterward, the website she directed her fans to, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit vote.org, recorded more than 35 voter registrations and increase that appeared to support the use of the word vote. But let's not forget George Orwell's banned book, 1984. You know about that book, right? George, anybody know about that book, 1984? Very good. Very good. I figured you knew. At its core, it's a novel about language, how it can be used by government to subjugate and obfuscate and by woke citizens to resist oppression. Some say that woke and critical race theory is being used to obfuscate or confuse the real meaning to the public. Woke has now been weaponized, and the way it is used now is markedly different from the radicalized version of the term. They want to blame white folks, I mean black folks, for the use of the word woke. Woke been here many years before slavery, okay? Woke in most dictionaries throughout the world had a definition that said it meant the need to stay informed, vigilant, and proactive in the face of any adversary, which would include poverty, discrimination, and how to being caught in some southern town that had a sundown law. Raise your hand if you know what the sundown law is. One, two, three, four, that's not bad. What's the sundown law? I might have to one get rid of Sundown law. Sundown law. I know you know. Sundown law. Um, I worked in a former sundown town. It's where black people could not exist safely past sundown, but weren't allowed to be there. Very good. Very good. Did you hear that? A sundown town refers to community set rules and to keep black people from living there. They could work, but they had to get out of town before sundown. And if they didn't, they could be victims of harassment, threat, arrest, beating, power, and feathering, and lynching. The 19th century Virginia law specified assemblage of Negroes for the purpose of instruction in reading or writing or in the nighttime for any purpose. Black people couldn't meet at night for a funeral, for a family dinner, whatever. It's unlawful. Any justice may issue a warrant to any officer or another person requiring him to enter any place where Negroes assemble and seize them, and they can be punished by prison, by whipping, and by any means necessary. If that law was in effect today, y'all would be in big trouble in this room. You'd be in orange jumpsuit. But now the word woke is sometimes used to attack the military, the FBI, the Department of Justice, Diversity, churches, libraries, librarians, teachers, women, people of color, minorities, the Democrats, half of the American voters, the IRS, people that serve on juries, poll workers, prosecutors, and court personnel. 
former President Barack Obama, the Army, and its generals, the news media, and you, you woke college students. How dare you? In a 2014 interview, the de facto leader of the Republican Party, anybody know who is the de facto leader of the Republican Party? Raise your hand if you do. Who's the de facto leader? Come on, people. Same hand, same people. Number 45 is de facto. Right? You agree? Okay. And he didn't like the phrase American exceptionalism because it offended who? It offended Vladimir Putin. Number 45 says, we don't want to offend Putin. He said, Putin said, well, I think it's a very dangerous term in one way because I heard Putin say, who do America think they are? Exceptional. But we don't want to offend them, right? Okay. But the control is lost to those that contra contradict intentions and nation building. The public will be powerless to stop them. If that happens, we will miss the woke mentality big time. Some people who flock to political rallies these days are more fans than followers. No history books for them. Fandom. Anybody know what fandom is? Raise your hand if you know what fandom is. Very good. Okay. Uh, at these rallies, some fans at these rallies are there for the fun, to be on the media, for cats, for t shirts, the flag, keep six signs and dressing up in red, white, and blue costumes as Halloween is every day, as they laugh about jokes about wounded soldiers, captured American soldiers, the handicapped, rude women jokes, and they laugh at every insult. But what, is, what about the teaching of the Bible that promotes being woke to fake gods and injustices? And too many kings and powerful people. What does the Bible say about being woke and awake? Anybody think the Bible says anything about woke and awake? Put your hand up. No one thinks the Bible, one person, two people, three, four, five. I can't be behind the pole, but it might be somebody back there. Here's what the Bible says about woke and being awake Luke 21 36. 30, 36. Stay awake at all times. Romans 13 11. Besides, if you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. But this is 5.14. Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead. Thessalonians 5, 6. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and sober. Isaiah 51, 9. Awake, awake, and put on strength. Revelation. Wake up and strengthen what remains. To business, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance. Corinthians, be watchful. Matthew 24, 42. This is the ultimate one. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know what day the Lord is coming. That makes sense? Okay. But yet, as I woke to this man, come from the same pulpit. pulpit. Who side do you believe that the man born in Bethlehem would be on today? He would be woke. Okay. Should today's black population forget what their ancestors as slaves went through? Who has the right to erase these atrocities from our mind? Should American Indians remember how their ancestors suffered and died trying to hold on to portions of their land while those that committed atrocities against them is, was glorified in movies? Have you ever seen movies where when they slaughtered a village of Indians, they were slaughtered, they were heroes in those days. Should blacks forget that it was against the law to even teach a black person to read and write in many southern states? Since I know few, if any of you, have thought about this in his history class, let's see what the law said. Between 1740 and 1834, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, North and South Carolina, and Virginia all passed anti literacy laws. South Carolina passed the first law which prohibited teaching slaves to read and write. Punishable by a fine of 100 pounds and six months in prison if you taught us to read and write. So we're behind and we should be behind because the law was, the purpose of the law was to keep you behind. You know what I mean? They've adjusted the law now and they're still trying to keep minorities behind. 1829, Georgia prohibited teaching blacks to read, punished by fine and imprisonment. 1830, Louisiana, North Carolina. Punishing anyone teaching blacks to read to be whipped. 1832, Alabama, Virginia, prohibited whites from teaching blacks to read or write, and they could be fined, but not flogged. 
1833, Georgia prohibited blacks from working in, or ready to working in any job that required reading. It was called the employment law and prohibited teaching black people punishable by fines and whipping. 1847, Missouri prohibited assembling or teaching slaves to write. Mississippi state law required a white person to serve a year in prison and a penalty for teaching a slave to read. So if they come in and find you with a book and a black person sitting there, no matter what it is, what, what your purpose is, you can go to jail. You can be with. Amy Bishop William Henry Heard is quoted as remembering that from his enslaved childhood in Georgia, that any slave caught writing suffered the penalty of what? Having his four fingers cut off of his right hand. Formerly enslaved people had similar memories of his stigma and severe, severe punishment for reading and writing. After listening to all this, is it more than correct to ask the race of people to forget their history as if it did not happen and only learn his story? Are you willing to forget yours? Do you want to forget your history? Do you want to ignore what your parents went through? Anybody here wants to ignore their history and doesn't want to know what their parents went through? Okay. But the battle cry went out from a leader of a southern state where he said, put your hand if you know who said this. We will fight the woke in legislation. We will fight the woke in education. We will fight the woke in business. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Our state is where woke goes to die. Put your hand up if you know who said that. One, two, three, four. Governor Sanders of Florida, okay? But it's ironic that on Thursday, 21st, September 203, this same leader of a southern state, had his name, you know it, where we'll go to die, fell to fifth place in the New Hampshire presidential poll, trailing a former president and three others. He fell in popularity. Does this mean that this leader is caught in a new version of the Sundown Law? And by the end, that she should get out of the 2024 presidential campaign because where he's at now is where his presidential run goes to die. <laughs> it's fun, very good. But enough of blatant racism on steroids. Should children and survivors of the Holocaust forget the past and not be affected by the story that they were told about a prophecy to the people? Any Jewish people in there? Put your hand. Do you be. Should you be forbidden from studying the history of your people? No. Thank you. Uh, will we continue to allow the winners to be the only ones to write history and approve a book? We have a moral obligation to stay woke, take a stand and be active, challenging injustice and racism in our community and fighting hatred and discrimination wherever it raises its ugly head. The case of those who want to stop woke because it will offend their children, will ignore the fact that there are numerous photographs of them taking the whole family with children as young as eight is nine to listen at family entertainment. They were not concerned about the children then or about the victims that were hung and put on display, guilty or not. Many of the lynchings were carnival-like events with vendors selling food, printing, posters, featuring photographs of the lynching and corpse, and the victim's body parts were allowed to be collected. Man hanging just got lynched. You could go up and collect his body parts. And you can just imagine what parts were the most valued. Uh, maybe a governor in Florida deserves a nickname given to by a former president of the United States. What did a former president call this candidate? What nickname did he give? It's Antonis. Okay. I personally, listen to this, I personally agree that some books, especially dealing with children and sensitive sexual issues, should not be indiscriminately available, and there should be some way to address this issue with parents' consent. Parents definitely should be involved. If you're talking about sexual orientation or things like that, parents should have a say. It should not be left up to some teacher to decide to give an education to a child in the third, fourth grade indiscriminately. That's a no-no. Parents should definitely be there. Fear is a weapon of political choice. 
Anybody know who Franklin Delano Roosevelt was? Put your hand up if you know who he is. Come on, every hand. Get your boy. Come on, how can you not? Uh, can I see the curriculum for UT? <laughs> Just a mission here. Franklin Delano, Delano Roosevelt, the 32nd president of the United States, is best known for his famous phrase. What's his famous phrase? Anybody? What's that again? Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh, Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt. What's his famous phrase? There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Is this your first year of college? <laughs> you need to help. You need to help me. He delivered his journey in in 1933 and has become one of the most iconic statements in American history. But with the far right and parents in both dresses and pants, fear is a weapon of choice to scare the people. Karen, by the way, was one of the top search for words in 2020. Everybody here know what a Karen is? Put your hand up. Karen. Seriously? What's a Karen? Anybody know what a Karen is? What's a Karen? Like an entitled white lady. <laughs> she thinks she's entitled, but she's really not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, political expression derived from Black activism includes stable and Black Lives Matter. It enrages some of the majority, and it doesn't matter if you balance it all out by saying all lives matter, trans lives matter, children's lives matter, women's lives matter, homeless lives matter, and the men and women in blue matter. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> some institutions, some politicians benefit from exploiting black, black votes, activism, activism, and culture, while telling us to bury our grievances about systemic violence and attempt to gerrymander the voting of people of color out of the voting process. We should not be concerned that we're losing the right to vote, that they're doing everything they can to change the map, everything they can to restrict black and people of color from voting. It's a full fledged. You know, straight ahead. But we're not supposed to be concerned about that. We're just supposed to lay there in the bed and, and watch uh, what Harvey, what's his name? Steve yeah, just lay in the bed and watch Steve Harvey and over, you know. Some institutions and some politicians benefit from exploiting black vote, activism, and culture while telling us to bear it our grievances, I repeat. Malcolm X. Anybody in here that doesn't know who Malcolm X is, put your hand up. Any, you don't know yet? I got to see the curriculum, really. Okay. You know what Malcolm X is, right? You know who he is? 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 Okay. Let's hook up with him at the end of this program. Okay. Talk to him. Malcolm, said, Malcolm X said there would come a time when Black people wake up and become intellectually independent enough to think for themselves. This type of thinking also brings an end to the brutality inflicted upon black people, and it's the only thing that will bring it into it. No federal court, no state court, or no city court will ever solve this problem. The essence of woke is awareness. Whether you are newly aware of pay gap, systemic racism, unchecked privilege, abuse of women and children, that's what woke helps you accomplish. And to do this with the newfound knowledge, that is the question. But regardless, some of you that answered the wake-up call are now woke, protesting, marching in the street and aware. If the woke are overly concerned with perception, the unwoke have failed to perceive it at all. It demands that we live our lives in respect for our law abiding fighting neighbors. But first we must wake up as the study of history is what allows us to tell our story while not replacing it with his story. Man Book Week is an annual awareness campaign promoted by the American Library Association and Amnesty International that celebrates the freedom to read, draw attention to ban and challenge books, and highlight persecuted individuals. In the past, school libraries mostly challenged or banned books in school libraries. But in 2022, wonder why, 41% of the events occurred in public libraries. It was said that our human rights to learn through reading should transcend political parties. But extremists have demanded that librarians remove books from jail and evil trends created in 2022. The banning books about family life, history of culture, 
differences of people of color, but yet we know that reading empowers us to understand each other. I don't care. I, I read books about Arabs, about Jews. I got black babies, I got books on all that. You found it? I read that and I learned something about the people. But if Florida had its way, wouldn't be able to do it. Could the basic objective be to place all books under government control, books of poetry, philosophy, race relations, and history? Since they are specifically targeted, they are targeting the minority people's view of history. They're not challenging theirs. They want you to believe in Christopher Columbus. You might as well put Christopher Columbus along with Santa Claus. Christopher Columbus said they discovered America. We're going to have a holiday. Christopher Columbus never set foot in America. He was arrested for the murder and slaughter of people in the island where he was. He was brought back in chains, right? He was brought back in chains, but he used number 45 and got a part. But he had wiped out and brought disease, rape, pillage, murder, and everything. But you celebrate Christopher Columbus because he discovered America. Never seen it. Uh, but it's a way to seize a small cult base by removing books to appease people who support their needs. Authors and historians saw knowledge as a way to change the world. But to some, it became a dangerous commodity. Knowledge, and that's why you're here, to get knowledge. They consider that a dangerous commodity. You should not be here to learn nothing. Books are not absolutely dead things, but do contain a potency of life as the active as the soul, wrote John Milton, author of Paradise Lost, in his 1644 book, Arrow Pagatica. Who killed a man? Killed an original creature. But he who destroys a good book kills reason itself. Rebecca New, author of Liberticide, the regime sponsored destruction of books and libraries in the 20th century. That's why power is so scary. Because power allows you to put into effect the logic of your own beliefs without debate. The unifying factor between all types of personal book burners in the 20th century she says, is that the perpetrators feel like victims, even if they're the ones in power. Perhaps the most infamous destruction of books were those staged by Adolf Hitler. Please raise your hand if you've ever heard of Adolf Hitler. Please, every, everybody. Oh, dead. Uh, but the, Jew, the, the German, uh, Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, Thought that they were victims. They were victims by the Jews. Does this sound familiar? The victims complaining? But back to the sunset, sunshine state, so it's darker and darker by the minute. In the 21st century, you were told by a politician in Florida, I'm using the term by a politician in Florida, but I don't want to keep calling his name. Uh, that critical race theory traumatizes the children and blames it for the past atrocities of their ancestors. I don't blame you for nothing that happened like that. I don't blame you. Even though you were back in some of the days, I don't blame you all for nothing. But they put that story out there, oh, you're traumatizing our kids. They didn't care about it when they were traumatizing kids, hanging people and burning them. And, and, and who came up with the concept of tarring and feathering? Can you even conceive to do that to a human being? Cover him with hot tar and then put feathers on his body. You know, I mean, how wicked is that process? But this was the South. In February 19, 1942, Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued the famous executive order against what race of people? An executive order against what race of people? Italian. What? There was an executive order enabled the government to seize the home and belongings of Italian immigrants. According to Lawrence Gustafi, the author of, forgive my Italian, Una Storia Sergretti, The Secret History of the Italian American Evacuation and Internment During World War II. Unnaturalized Italians were required to head to the post office, to be fingerprinted, photographed, and furnished with an enemy alien registration card, which they were expected to carry at all times under travel restrictions. Because of the travel restrictions, the writer said mothers could not visit their children, 
In hospital, they were more than five miles away. Families could not attend a relative's funeral. No alien Italian could make a trip to visit distant friends or relatives. That's what they did with us. We had a sundown town. We had to get out. We couldn't stay there. We couldn't. If they come in the room and found us in the room, we would be whipped and in prison. Italians were under the same thing at that time. So we bonded with them. Uh, they also subject to curfew, violation of any terms and arrest and indefinite detention. But notice, unlike black slave violators, Italians were not beaten. Between 1876 and 1930, a wave of Italians arrived on American shores. Vociferous arguments were made against these undesirable immigrants. Italians just during this period were the targets of mass lynching and racist slurs like Guinea and Dago. Why do they call Italian Dago? You know that's a slur. Why do they call them? Because as Italians were paid as the day goes. They were only paid by the day. They were used as strike brokers. Uh, breakers against white people and Italians was with the black man back in the day. Uh, they were called WAP. You heard that term? You know what WAP stands for? Without papers. So I never knew this until I researched it. But I mean, these, they had been. Uh, in 1924, the same year the United States immigration quota system was implemented. Literary Digest declared the recent Italian immigrants as a whole present a higher percentage of inborn socially inadequate qualities, and those recent arrivals suffer from feeble mindedness, deformity, and criminality. So they were they were us then. Okay. Isn't it ironic that the governor of Florida thinks that books about critical race theory should only apply to people of color, and he forgets his own history of how his people were discriminated against. A book is a loaded gun in the house next door, one character warned in Bradbury's story, arguing for why they must be burned in the knowledge of race. Who knows who might be the target of a well-read man? They fear that. They don't want you to know anything. And they fear that a well-read man would eventually make them a target. But was there a speech made at the Las Vegas Hotel where one candidate said, we won with the poorly educated. I love the poor, the poorly educated. Anybody know who said that? Put your hand up. One person, only one person knew that Trump said that, that he won with the uneducated and he loved the uneducated. You go to the head of the door, okay? Uh, Barbara Tuckman said in a 19-year address at the Library of Congress, Books are the carriers of civilization. Without books, history is silent. Literature is dumb. Science is crippled. Thought and speculation at a standstill. Without books, the development of civilization would have been impossible. Sometimes when a, when a, com a country went into another country and invaded it, the first thing they did is burn the library. Thousands of years of knowledge lost. That was their way of trying to destroy that country. To the Indians, they got rid of the buffalo. But to any educated places like Ethiopia or whatever, they burned the library. In Alexander, they burned it. They didn't want the books to last. The, the, the Nazis didn't want Jewish, Jewish knowledge to last. They didn't want it to spread. According to the American Library Association, book management restrictions at schools and public libraries set a record in 2022. The association compiled more than 1,200 challenges in 2022, double the previous years in 2021. Wonder why. In America also said that they found more than 2,500 instances of books being banned, affecting more than 1,600 titles from July 21 to 2022. What two states were first and second in banning books? Anybody, just shout it out. Who do you think? Two Everybody states. Texas. And who else? Two states. Florida, Texas. Florida and Texas. Florida and Texas. The number one, number two, and one state that banned books. In around 1982, organizers of the Booksellers Association locked 400 books in a huge padlock metal cage to bring convention boards as they entered the venue. Overhead, a sign cautioned 
that some people find these books to be dangerous. So they like them in animal cages. The exhibit was a huge success and sparked the idea to have banned book weeds. Their, uh, their audience was captivated. Bookstores and schools started holding readouts like here. But have no fear because we have a true warrior that for many years has had our back. She has had my back for 10 years. Uh, let's hear it for her. Wait for us. Why are they applauding? <laughs> you don't always get people's attention. Even when you're praising them, you don't always get attention. I could see that in days, you know. Okay. I'll read that again. But have no fear because we have a true warrior that for many years has had our back. She had my back at Van Brook for 10 years. I give you the. That was work. Today, Van Brook book reaches an estimated 2.8 million readers. The book is still being challenged. Uh, if sleep prevents us from resisting this history of savagery, then one must remember Malcolm X's, Malcolm X's message. The greatest mistake of a movie is it has been to try to organize a sleeping people around specific goals. You have to wake the people up first. You have to get their attention. That's what the Bible preaches. People of color, women, and those in the bottom rank continue to tell each other to stay woke. Some people are antagonistic to race theory. But we black people, if we don't use that, we have no weapon. Anyhow, a word of caution. Look these issues up on yourself. Please do not go home and tell your parents you heard this from a black man. You'll be sent away from the dinner table and cut out of the will. Okay, so don't take what I'm saying as the gospel. Look some of it up. Duh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I want to pay attention is we have just been horrendously sharp handed this morning. And so then Montezola, Dr. Montezola, if you have you return, always a big help. She always every year she serves most of the day. And make sure here's the thing, if you did not sign our book, please do. I need your signature so I can count the numbers and then I can get people to give me some. That's how I get them. That's how I work on them. So they give me either money for food and food sandwiches are here. Yeah.